Welcome. My name is Miranda Pierce. I am a wife and stay at home mom, the former bling boss of Pierce's paparazzi. And this is making yourself at home. You guys bear with me because I am doing something I have never done before. We are going impromptu because I've had this idea churning around in my mind for some time that I wanted to do this kind of theme or segment or whatever you'd like to call it. Just a sh little short and sweet little nugget. Um, and I finally have found the right opportunity. <laughs> so I wanted to preface this, uh, this segment with some scripture here to kind of explain why I'm doing this. All right. So this is in John chapter one in the new Testament. And this is where we see a man named Nathaniel meet Jesus and how he becomes one of the disciples. So in verse 48, it says, Nathanael saith unto him, Whence knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou wast under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Rabbi, thou art the son of God. Thou art the king of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Now, if you haven't watched The Chosen, I highly recommend you do because the portrayal of this scene is done so beautifully. But the story has just caught hold of my heart over the last few months. That feeling, there's so many opportunities in our lives, seemingly small, simple things that come into our day-to-day -day lives that help us to feel like Nathaniel does in this moment, to feel loved, to feel seen, to recognize the hand of God in our lives. So <laughs> I wanted to share one of those moments. So this is fig tree moments because we all have these moments. So here's one of my fig tree moments. You'll probably hear, hopefully you'll hear more of these little fig tree moments scattered about as the show continues on. This will be hopefully a regular thing that happens every once in a while. Now, if you are a Swifty, you will understand this with no explanation. <laughs> but I will explain it just in case you are not a Taylor Swift fan so that you understand as well. <laughs> so on her latest album, Midnight, track number five is called You're On Your Own, Kid. <laughs> now, track, her track fives are usually, all of them, tend to be quite emotional songs. And this one is no exception. This song is about a lot of the trials that and hardships that she has faced growing up and in her career and how she has felt alone through them. So it's kind of deceiving because it's got this catchy pop beat, but it is pretty, it makes you feel some things. <laughs> It's pretty emotional. Um, but I love it because there's this shift towards the end. There's a line that reads, so make the friendship bracelets. Take the moment and taste it. You've got no reason to be afraid. You're on your own, kid. You can face this. You're on your own, kid. You always have been. I love it because despite all the hardship, you can still find joy. You can still find purpose in and through those hard things. And not only that, 
the friendship bracelet line makes you think you can, even with all the hardship that we face, you can remain open to friendship, to love, to connection, and feel worthy of that. So <laughs> Taylor Swift fans, or self-proclaimed Swifties, as we like to call ourselves, took this line very literally and physically went and made friendship bracelets to trade at the Eras Tour that is currently happening, which I thought was just such a stinking cute idea. I got on board. It was an excuse to do something crafty and girly with, with my girls. Um, and I did. I went to... Arlington, Texas, her night two show out there with my bestie. And I brought me a Ziploc baggie full to the brim, probably 50 bracelets at least. Now in the excitement of it all <laughs> and just like the location of where our seat was and stuff, I can count on one hand the amount of bracelets I actually got to trade. It really, <laughs> it just, it was, it didn't happen. Like I was hoping it would. And that's okay. And I mean, I still was able to give some to my bestie and for her to take some for her girls. And it was like, okay, it was still worth doing, but it was a little disappointing. Now somebody had the forethought to make a Facebook group kind of dedicated to this. They went out of their way to arrange basically like a Swifty pen pal almost a group of us that either were like me and didn't get a chance to trade bracelets with very much at their show or, or for people who weren't able to get tickets to any shows, but they still wanted to, to be involved with the bracelet trading. Um, and that way we can send them through the mail. So cute, right? So simple. <sighs> what gets me, and I'm going to try not to get emotional because last time I talked about this, I got emotional. <laughs> Um, what gets me is how, how people have connected. This group has, you know, talked every time a show pops up, they've talked about their, the costumes, they've talked about moves and the things that are going on in their lives. And it's fun to see friendships being made. But even more than that, these ladies have gone out of their way to find out favorite colors, favorite albums, favorite songs, specifics, and incorporated them into the bracelets. Basically customizing of each bracelet to an individual. It's that personal touch. They just, they took it a step further. And I've received a handful of these bracelets and each one is so unique. Each one has my favorites. It's, it just, it floors me every time. And some of these ladies have even gone a step further and have included um, stickers. They've included extra bracelets for my girls. It's just so heartwarming and so thoughtful. This was such a simple idea done really just for fun. But I'm so grateful that somebody had the thought to make that Facebook group. I'm so grateful for these women who went the extra mile to make these just for me. It seems really simple, but it was such a testament to me, a, a fantastic reminder to never suppress a good thought or a good deed. Because you don't know the effect that it can have on that person, on the people around you, uh, at the people who are involved, and even the people who are just spectating. It could be their fig tree moment. So that is my challenge to you. Never suppress a good thought or a good deed. That's it for now. <laughs> Let me know if you listening to this, think of a fake tree moment. Please share with me on my socials what your fig tree moments are. Those moments where you feel seen, where you feel loved. 
tell me something good, <laughs> big or small. And if you're willing for me to share on the show too, that would be incredible. I would love it. Let me know if that's possible as well. Because I feel like the more that we share stories like this, the more that it's, the more easily we can recognize them when they happen in our own lives. Until next time, have the best week. <laughs>